Dans la, dans la poésie et les mots, puisque la Fondation anime une plateforme poétique ce soir, tous les jeudis. Donc, euh, ah bien ça, ça nous porte, ouais. ça nous donne de l'espoir. Voilà. Hello Florence. Bonjour. Euh, Bénédicte and Prio à Pro Il est quelle heure pour toi, euh, Marc Là, il est midi. Ah, il est midi mm. ouais. Ah, trop bien. J ai, j ai... Non, il est 11h, moi j'ai marqué. <rire> uh, hey, Lucrezia. Hello. How are you? Good, and you? Hi, Mark. Where Hello, are you? Hello, Lucrezia. Now I'm in London. Now I'm in London. I was in Brazil for almost two months. Uh -huh. And then BA canceled the flight, and flight canceled, canceled, and then at the end I bought a ticket by Lufthansa and came through Frankfurt, and so I got here. Yeah. Oh my God! Ah, good, Hello. good for you. Good for you. And your, your husband is in London still yes, now, or not? Yes. No, yeah, no, he was already. He stayed all the time in London. He stayed all the time. I went to Brazil, but he stayed all the time here. No, but for a plus grand. Yeah. Yeah. I okay. Uh, so that's good. That's good. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you're so lucky in a way to have been able to travel. You know, I feel like I, I haven't moved anything at all. And uh, oh, yeah, but yes. it's kind of scary. Uh, yeah. the, the airport. It's very strange. Uh -huh. uh, you got there and. Oh, I'm, I'm not. Get into a hospital or something I'm, like that. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Mark, I think we. Uh, what do, what we do can, you think? May, Brenda will will arrive. No, in the. I suppose, I suppose she will arrive. And and, it, it, and Tera, we still can't yeah, see you, see you see but me. we can hear you. So. Uh, okay. So I'll I keep on trying. I can see Mark. Yeah. I, Yes. And you can, and you can, and you have, uh, and Pierre, you have uh, Terra's images also, no? Don't you? Abs absolutely, I do. I do, so it's okay. I will keep uh, trying, I'm and if I may, until my, yeah. you know, when, when my time comes to, to speak. Okay, Let's see. so, uh, so. Ah, Brenda, uh, Brenda is arriving. Ah, Brenda is arriving, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. How oh, nice. Good. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay, good. So, uh, good, good, good afternoon, everybody. Good morning for the ones who are in Brazil. Uh, thank and you. I'm in New York. For, uh, having uh, accepted this invitation. Yes, so I've got only a DHL. But, uh, um, so, so will you close it? And, uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm going to mute you all, and then, uh, yeah. Okay. Up. I'm going to mute you all and uh, and uh, so that's an unmute, of course, Marc Potier, who is the first to start. And if you have uh, any questions or uh, you can use the chat button at the end and we will, at uh, the, the, the moment of question and answers, use the, 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 these questions. Uh, so I'm very, I'm very glad to, uh, to, to uh, organize this, uh, the Zoom meeting uh, that I, I prefer the name Zoom meeting as webinar, which I find much too much intellectual, by the way. Zoom has got this really trendy thing, you know, <laughs> that I like. Uh, so, Marc, you are French. You're living in uh, between Paris and Rio de Janeiro. And uh, you are an international curator, collector, specializing in art and contemporary art and in public spaces. Uh, you have managed collection and uh, most of all, for a very long time, you were a French a cultural attaché for, uh, in Rio de Janeiro and in Lisbon. You have organized fantastic exhibitions in 1995 at the Venice Biennale, the walk, the avant-garde walk in, in Venezia, a walk in New York also, and uh, Elle at Centre Pompidou that uh, was brought to Rio de Janeiro. Uh, you uh, have been a guest curator at the third Baia Biennial, 
And uh, now you will be curating uh, the next version of the Kurutiba Biennial in 2021, uh, which are, you're going to maybe say a few words. And uh, in, during these, uh, these confinement times, you've been very, very active and been interviewing like uh, 200 artists for the Brazil, Brazilian cultural channel Arte One uh, on a, sort of a series of films called Foreign Eye. So, um, so and thank museum you. Museum TV in Europe. <laughs> and museum TV in New York. Yes, exactly. That was a very yes. Uh, so today you have uh, invited Fernanda Arruda, who is the adjunct curator of the InnoTeam Museum. Uh, you have invited Brenda Valen Valenzi, the curator and director of the Fair Arterio, and Tera Queiro, a collector and founder of N Plus One Cultural Production in Sao Paulo. So now I'm going to share my screen in order to go to your presentation, Mark, and, uh, and, then, uh, and then I will let you uh, speak. Uh, just a minute. It's going to take me just a few. Can you see it? Yeah, man, this is the last page. <laughs> yeah, I know because I was looking at it earlier. So now I have to go uh, slideshow. Ta-da! <laughs> okay, you can, you can go. Okay, so thank you very much. And it's very nice for, to see a lot of uh, very good friends uh, uh, present to this uh, small presentation. Um, as we have not so much time, uh, you know, what you are going to listen today is a very, um, it's a very short presentation because, you know, to, to resume what Brazil is about in terms of uh, contemporary art, uh, it would take like many days. Uh, if you go to the, um, to the first image of my presentation, please. Thank you. So, no, first of it, voilà. I put I, I put you I put you this Sorry. map uh, just just to come back to the uh, what Brazil is about. This is a huge country. I put like some numbers. Uh, we are like 211 million people. We speak Portuguese. Uh, we are the sixth most populous uh, country in the world and the fifth largest largest country in the world. So. And Brasilia is uh, the capital of, of Brazil. You know, just to, to, give, to come back to the very base. I put this map because you can realize that uh, Brazil has a lot of uh, huge cities. Uh, of course, Rio de Janeiro, people say that we are like 10 million, Sao Paulo, 18 million. Uh, if you think about Belo Horizonte, Salvador, um, Curitiba, Porto Alegre, uh, uh, we speak about two or three million people. So you can imagine this huge country with a lot of people, a lot of energy, and people who have been coming from all over the world. We speak about in Bahia uh, with a lot of uh, Afro-Brazilians uh, origins, but if you go to uh, Sao Paulo, and Terra will speak better than I, we speak about uh, the first community of Japanese people. They are mm -hmm. the most uh, numerous pe Japanese people outside of Japan. Uh, the same for Lebanese people. Uh, if you go to the south of um, Brazil, you will see a lot of uh, Polish, Russian, German communities. So this country is made of a lot of culture. So to try to make a definition of what art is about in Brazil is quite impossible. I'm going to try to do it and we can go to the next image. So um, big country. At one point, we had like four binals. So, of course, the San Paulo binal, and Terra will speak better than I uh, uh, in, in, a, in a few moments, uh, mm -hmm. which has been created in 1951, is with the Venice Biennial and the Documenta of Castle, one of the third biggest event ever about contemporary art. What you see here is this huge building of, uh, which has been uh, imagined by Oscar Niemeyer. Uh, we, will, we will speak a lot, uh, you will see a lot of images of Oscar Niemeyer during this short presentation uh, because he was one of the very most important uh, architects of this country, which has a a lot of other big architects and the image you see on your left is the inside and you you can see so now 
So I was speaking about the San Paolo Biennale. Bi 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 uh, the next image is about the Curitiba Biennale. And you will see another Oscar Niemeyer building. C can we go to the next? Yeah, ex excellent. Thank you. Um, so this is the MON, the Museum Oscar Niemeyer in Curitiba with this sort of eye on the top, which is really a, a crazy architecture. And uh, this is where you have one of the uh, uh, other biennale, which has been created in 1993. And I'm lucky because, you know, I have been invited to think about the 15 uh, biennale, which will uh, happen um, next year in 2021, where I have invited um, as guest, as co-curator Guillaume Loger, um, because I read his book, La Renaissance Sauvage, and um, for you to know that we are going to work a lot about this relationship between man and nature uh, for this biennale. You have also the Porto Alegre Biennale, which is also another city in the south of Brazil, uh, which is uh, the Biennale of the Mercosur, more linked with artists from the uh, South Americas. And uh, in 2014 was another version of the Bahia Biennale of Art, which unfortunately stopped. And it was quite interesting. And I had the, the, um, the chance to, pa to participate to this Biennale. So big country, four Biennales. And then next, next image, please. Uh, one of the best projects uh, in terms of, uh, let's reduce it to a sculpture park, but um, uh, Fernanda will, will speak about it really better than I. It's for me one of the very best projects we can ever think about uh, a dialogue between artists on architecture in a huge park, which is near Belo Horizonte, but uh, uh, Fernanda will speak better than I in a few moments. So let's go to the next uh, image. A lot of museums. So uh, I've been selecting these two images of MASP. We are in Sao Paulo. Teha will speak better than I. And this, uh, uh, so the architect was Lina Bobardi, that was uh, from Italian origin, and that you will see uh, in the presentation of Teha her house in San Paolo, which is uh, really a pearl to discover. And in the image you have on the right, this is the Niterhoi uh, Museum. Uh, which has also been done by Oscar Niemeyer. Let's go back, go to the next one. Oh, wait. So, uh, uh, also uh, Oscar Niemeyer, this is Brasilia, the museum, uh, museum uh, Na National Museum. And on the left, I put something really different. We are in Recife, and this is the Officina Brennan. Brennan was an, an artist, and he has been creating his own foundation. And this is a very interesting. Uh, uh, or the pearl of the country, a very different uh, space. I'm putting, you know, all this image for you to realize how big are the museums, how interesting they are in terms of architecture, and of course, in terms of, uh, 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 you know, the, the selection of the exhibitions are quite interesting. Let's go to the next uh, image. So this is, and Brenda will speak, this is the Marina da Gloria in Rio de Janeiro. What you see, this little light is the, the Christ. And this is where Brenda is now organizing the art fair in uh, Rio de Janeiro. So you have Art Rio and you have in Sao Paulo, Espe Arch, which takes place in April and which is also one of the very good uh, international art fair. Let's go to the next one. So now let's go a little bit about what uh, contemporary art is about in, uh, uh, in Brazil. The turning point was in uh, 1922, uh, which was like, you know, the, really the, the beginning of, uh, of uh, what is about modern art and contemporary art. And then we can go, uh, I'm, I'm really sorry because there is so much thing to say, to say and, uh, and we have so few time that I'm just giving you like some sips you have to leave this uh, presentation as an appetizer. And I hope you know that you, what you're going to see will give you the wish to know better and to travel to Brazil. So what was very important was the Manifesto Anthropophago, uh, the Anthropo... anthropo uh, how can I try to translate, to, translate to, to English? Uh, 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 anthrop 
anthropophagique manifeste by the poet Os Oswald de Andrade, um, which is really one of the key uh, moments for you to understand the relationship of Brazil with uh, the other part of the world. This was a way uh, for, for the Brazilian to, uh, I hope this is the right word, to swallow uh, the European legacy. You, 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 of course, the relationship between, we don't have to forget that, as I was mentioning, Brazil is made about, of course, the, the influence of the Portuguese arriving uh, when Napoleon uh, was invading Portugal. Uh, uh, so the influence of Portugal, but the influence of so many uh, culture, uh, but the European culture was very important. So the Brazilian always has been trying to say, we are different. We are able to digest everything which is coming from uh, abroad and especially on Europe and to show that we have our own culture. And this is why this uh, manifest is quite Im important. And actually, uh, the, uh, actually, we are arriving now with some key artist who for me is making the difference you, of course, Brazil, as a, one more time, is so big, you have all the way of, uh, 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 of creating art. You have uh, great painters, you have great sculptures. But for me, the big difference is with artists who has been really, we're more into the field of performances and, and the way uh, they were inviting the public to participate to the creation of the works of art. And uh, you see in this image two key artists that you have been discovering. I've been selecting also a lot of artists that you have seen in London, because I understand that uh, a lot of people are linked to London, living in London, or linked to, to, to the UK. And you have uh, on, on the left uh, a selection of black and white images of uh, Ligia Clark. Ligia Clark was an artist born in Minas Gerais, Belo Horizonte, where uh, Ignotin is. She has been living uh, a lot in Rio de Janeiro. You will see a lot of artists from Rio de Janeiro because it has been like a very important art scene uh, in Brazil. And she was, uh, let's say, to try to resume such a huge artist, she was involved with body art. She was like many of these artists we are going to see now uh, involved with the demystification of art. She was the one who was, uh, as you can see in this image, black and white Im images, uh, working a lot with soft material to come back to the sensuality. So she was inviting you to, with the, um, your eyes closed, to go back to uh, the material, to the water, to the sand, to the heart, to, the, to the, what is cold, and to come back to, the, to a, a sort of sensu sensualism. Um, uh, of course, we are. Um, um, she, she was also uh, with a lot of uh, psychoanalyst references, and uh, on the on the way of the sensual objects. On the right, you see some uh, uh, the name of these works of Elio Tisica. Elio Tisica is a major Brazilian artist who died in 1980. He was from Rio de Janeiro. It's really the world of performances, uh, the exercise of experimentation of freedom, and it was very linked with communities. And what you see in these images are the parangole. This was the sort of like dresses he was creating. And with the mangueira, which is uh, one of the main um, carnaval school we have and community we have in Rio de Janeiro, he was with them, with the community, creating this sort of uh, dance and then getting into the beaches to create the performances. So you understand that, uh, I'm trying to, to make you understand that we are in a very different world of performance, of interaction with the public, uh, uh, where the sensations are very important. Let's go to the next uh, uh, image. So, Ligia Clark, Elio Tisica, uh, the, let's say the third one of the, of the team was Ligia Pape. Ligia Pape uh, was, uh, died in 2004. She was also uh, uh, in, um, in, um, living in Rio de Janeiro. And uh, when, we can, when we think about her, we can think about another manifest, which is uh, uh, the Neon Concretismo Manifest, which was uh, something which was born in the, in the 50s. And you have a manifesto in, the, in, in uh, 59. And it was one more time, you know, this sort of like um, 
uh, way of resilience to say they are very different. And so they were absolutely neoconcretismo, so against the orthodox of the constructivism and the geometrical uh, dogmatism. They wanted to um, really to go into the freedom of experimentation where the public can be involved. And uh, the image of uh, Teteya, which is reproduced in this uh, image, has been shown uh, at the Serpentine in, uh, in London like a couple of uh, years ago. Let's go to the next one. Um, well, for uh, many of you, you, uh, you know me and you know how linked I was with Tunga. Tunga was my key of Brazil. When uh, the first time I arrived to Brazil in 92, uh, I met very shortly after Tunga and when he had this exhibition at the Palette, uh, at the uh, Jeu de Paume. Uh, and Tunga, um, one more time, is an artist that it's very hard to define. For me, he's a poet. And like many of the very talented Brazilian artists, is uh, at, the, uh, at the age of visual art, philosophy, mathematics, uh, performances, and uh, what you see in this, uh, in this black and white uh, image was a performance he made, I suppose, at the White Chapel, like some uh, some years ago, but we still are like with this sort of artist where the philosophy uh, is quite important. Uh, Sildo Mereles, another living artist in Rio de Janeiro, very important uh, Brazilian, uh, Brazilian artist, um, is also with the sens sensorial experience. He was also, uh, he is also a, a political artist and has been Criticism, doing a, a huge criticism of the military dictatorship. You know or you don't know that, uh, unfortunately, Brazil had the dictatorship uh, between 1964 until uh, 85, and he was really doing this criticism. And he's also making a criticism about our economical addiction, you know, the society where until now, until this, this huge crisis we, have been li we are living in, we are involved in, um, is something which is quite important for, for him. Next image. To give you some other directions and some artists you have seen in London, uh, Mira Chandel, uh, which has been showing at the Tate, she, she was a Swiss artist, but then living in Sao Paulo, and uh, she died in 1988. And what you see, it's a monotypia on, the, on rice paper, where Pa, pa, same, you know, it's impossible to define such a huge artist. She was a great painter. But I think uh, what you have seen at the Tate, uh, what was memorable was this, uh, this language she was putting into this rice paper. You have on the other image another huge artist, Sergio Camargo from Rio de Janeiro. From, uh, who died in 1989. And he was making this... Uh, composition uh, with a cylinder of wood and then marble to redefine this, this, uh, this way of uh, uh, painting sculpture. Next, uh, next image. Uh, so um, I've been selecting this image of Beatrice Miazes. She's an artist, uh, a huge artist, a Brazilian living in Rio de Janeiro. And this is an intervention she made in the subway in London. Uh, some years ago, but she's an artist uh, that you uh, you know because of her arabesque, the Baroque world she's involved, the colors she's uh, uh, always, uh, which is always a definition of uh, of her work. And when I was telling that Brazil is very difficult to define, um, and, and yeah, you have so many talents, you have a, a lot of very good painters that we can discover if you go to. Uh, Brazil. The other image is an image of uh, the exhibition that you can see when it will be reopening at the Fondation Cartier, Luis Zerbini, another fantastic artist living in Rio de Janeiro. And like uh, many other artists, um, you can see that uh, he is a fantastic painter, also getting into uh, the world of colors, uh, speaking about nature, creating this sort of uh, 
history in the history because each painting is made of many many different history you have this installation which is also like some others uh, very involved with music and it belongs to a group which name is Shelpa Ferro and doing a lot of concerts so you know these artists the to define uh, the art and to define each artist is quite difficult because they are they have like so many different ways of speaking about uh, art next uh, image so uh, I suppose that most of you, you know, another star artist from Brazil, Vic Muniz, who lives also in Rio de Janeiro. And uh, I've been putting this uh, Jackson Pollock in chocolate because he is an artist who has been uh, using a lot of different materials. I suppose, you know, the Marilyn in diamonds. And uh, he's an artist who, is, who has been revisiting the history of art thanks to uh, collages and using these different materials. Uh, the other image you can see on your right, another star artist from Brazil, Adriana Varejon. And this image uh, is from the pavilion she has in, uh, in Yotin. And I suppose that Fernanda will mention this amazing pavilion. And as you may know about her, she also has been, she's a fantastic painter, and she has been revisiting the history of Brazil. And uh, most of the of known works of her are made about the reinterpretation of the Portuguese uh, azulejos. We can go to the next. Uh, image it, it's very complicated i've been doing this selection but you some of you are going to see mark why don't you see you will not see ernesto netto who is a, also a great artist and very involved with the with the uh, indigenous uh, cause you will not see another fantastic woman artist uh, claudia anduja another one who is involved with the indigenous uh, culture uh, Sebastian Salgado, uh, uh, who is another photographer, star that you have seen quite a lot. Miguel Rio Branco. I, I think it's absolutely impossible. As I said, you know, I, 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 I've been trying to give you some appetite and, and frustration and for you to say, I want to know more about this artist. I want to come to Brazil because there is so much to see. So here we see another amazing artist, Ana Maria Maiolino. Uh, this is an image of the White Chapel exhibition she had like some um, time ago. She was born in Italy. She uh, was living in Rio and now she's in Sao Paulo. And she is another very, it's very defined, very difficult to define her because she was for the performance. She's a, an amazing sculpture. I suppose you, some of you have seen her exhibition at the Hauser and Wirth galleries all over the world. And uh, uh, same thing, you know, she belongs to this uh, generation of uh, multi-talented artists. Another artist you have seen in, um, at the Tate, I suppose, uh, at Tate or Whitechapel, is Rivan Neunschwander. And um, same thing, she is an artist trying to involve uh, the public to her art. Next uh, image. So I put this image of, uh, let's say, a younger artist, uh, Marcelo Jacome, because you, you may have seen this work at the Saatchi Gallery. And uh, uh, the, uh, he is working a lot with the popular, um, uh, popular culture. And what you see is a sculpture made of this, uh, uh, in Portuguese, it's pipa. And how do you say it in English? Uh, Cervolant. Uh, ah. <laughs> Well, you, you know, these things you put into kites, uh, kites. kites. <laughs> made of this kite. So let's go to the next uh, image. So same thing, uh, it's impossible to speak about Brazil. I've been mentioning the Salvador de Bahia. So of course you have a lot of artists dealing with the uh, heritage of the uh, Afro-Brazilian uh, culture. On the left, uh, you see one of the book of this very uh, talented artist from Belo Horizonte, uh, Sonia Gomez. And uh, on the right, you see a huge painting by a tribe, the Uni Queen, living in Acre. Alors, Acre, you are absolutely on the west side of Brazil, near Peru. And these uh, huge paintings you have seen, I must say, uh, it's like when I've been inviting them to the exhibition I made in Sao Paulo in 2014, and I really wanted to have them. 
and they have been creating this an amazing painting, which is an illustration of the holy songs and speaking about the importance of snakes into, uh, into their, their culture. Next uh, slide. No. Well, uh, Krasberg that uh, some of you uh, knows because he had a space in Paris in the 14th arrondissement. He was a Polish artist who has been uh, living in the south of Bahia and Rio de Janeiro. And of course, all his work is known because he has been fighting a lot to save the forest and to shout against uh, how the ma man is um, Badly, badly treating uh, the forest all over the world and especially in Amazonia in Brazil. And I think I'm finishing with this last slide uh, to speak about, you know, like all over the world, we, we have also a lot of very well-known artists from um, the street art. And on the, on the, on the left, you see uh, this uh, huge um, uh, fresco by Ogemios. And on the right, uh, Cobra. This is in Rio de Janeiro. And it's supposed to be uh, the most important fresco all over the world, uh, speaking about the condition of the indigenous. So one more time, um, I've been just opening some doors, giving you some uh, sips of what you can imagine uh, you can discover in Brazil. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, and, and maybe you have seen this is to, to speak about like the new generation. This is a younger artist, but today you can see uh, almost in all the binars and many exhibitions. Maxwell Alexandre is an artist from the Rossinha, which is one of the uh, favelas of Rio de Janeiro, and doing amazing installation on paintings, speaking about, you know, uh, the, how life is uh, in the communities. So this is just a sip. Uh, I, I suppose a lot of you are going to be extremely frustrated because you think I've been forgetting a lot of names and you will be perfectly right. And now I think I give the, uh, I think the next one is Fernanda to speak about Inyotin, which is for me uh, with uh, in Naoshima and what the uh, Domenil family has been doing in the Americas, one of the very, very best projects all over the world to discover contemporary art. Uh, okay, just a minute. So, uh, wait, wait. Fernanda, uh, this is Fernanda, yeah. Uh, I need to, uh, can you unmute you, Fernanda? Uh, I can't find you. Uh, here, got it. Wait. Can you hear me, everybody? Yes, we can hear you. Good. Great. Thank you. Uh, so at some point, I'm going to have to share... Uh, my screen to for my images, mm -hmm. if you don't mind. Can I just do that on top of yours? Yes. Uh, yes, you can. I cannot start can sharing you, without... You so, yeah, you have to stop sharing so I can share. I thought... No, okay, okay, sorry. I thought I had stopped sharing. Go ahead. Okay, okay. So, let me share here. Thank you. By the way, thank you, Mark, for such a, a difficult presentation because it's a, it's, a, it's a very large country and there is so much to learn, <laughs> as you said. So you made a fantastic resume. <laughs> yeah, that was great. And uh, I will talk about Klaus Jean Dujar for you. So <laughs> can you hear me? Yes, we can. We can. I cannot hear Mark. Ah, eu vou sair para comer um sanduíche, tá? Vou sem chave. Ah, dois minutos, tá? So, um, thank you, Mark, for inviting me to be here and talk about Inhotim. And uh, uh, I'm not sure how many of you know about the, the museum, so I'm just going to go, um, you know, give an inter introduction. So, just talk about numbers. I mean, in a sense, like explain what Inyo Ching is. It's not a museum, you know, it could be an art park, an open air museum. Um, there are many ways to describe. I like to call it a destination where people can enjoy art in a different way. Uh, now, now, today we have 
24 single artist pavilions, 25 uh, permanent uh, sculptures in the park. We also have four temporary art galleries where we work on uh, curated shows. Uh, temporary shows can last from one year to two years. Uh, so everything there is long term, long term planning. And uh, we are also we are also a botanical garden. Uh, can you guys still hear me? It's kind yes, of we hear you. Yeah, yeah. So we are also a botanical garden. Um, we have around five thousand species of plants and a great collection of palm trees, which is one of uh, Bernardo's, the creator of Inuching, main passion. Uh, passion. So today the, the museum, you need two days to visit the museum. So I'm gonna show a few images here. So to understand a little bit of Inyo Ching is that Bernardo Paz, who's the founder of the museum, he used to live in the region, he still lives there. He had a small farm. He collects contemporary, more like modern Brazilian art at the time. And when he realized that the whole region was threatened by development, he decided to buy. So he bought 5,000 acres of land all surrounding his small farm at the time. And with this in mind, you know, he decided to do something different, something, create a legacy, something that it would be able to change the region where he was in and, and allow more people to see art in a different way. So when he bought all this land, he's like, what are we gonna do? So he uh, talked to Alan Schwarzman, who is the chief curator of the, the museum uh, until today. I came on board as well. And the idea was like with his passion for art and landscape, what can we create that's different than everybody else? So what do we have? Scale, we have mountains, we have forest, we have uh brazilian art i mean we have culture so what can we do that nobody else can do so we started you know talking to artists and i think uh like mark mentioned tunga and sildo they were really really strong um uh strong part of the creating of the museum especially tunga who's very good friends with bernardo and really told him you know you can't just buy art you should do something more you know so he bought some art and then he built a gallery and then the gallery just kept expanding and he's like, let's do something that it makes sense and has, you know, it has some kind of path that, to create that. So um, basically uh, most of the works would be something like uh, give artists a chance of them uh, realizing a work that was probably a fantasy, something that they had planned but never thought possible that could be built. So I can show a little bit of, you know, this is a Tunga pavilion, which is uh, the piece through Rouge. Look, 10 minutes is almost impossible for me <laughs> to talk about in your cheese, so I'm gonna kind of rush through and like Mark said, you can always, you know, contact me, I can answer questions, or I think the idea is really to, you know, give you a little uh, taste of what we are doing there, and hopefully you come and visit, because it is about the experience, it's not about each work, it's about, uh, so for example, the idea, so this is Sildo Morales, um, so Sildo and Tunga have a big presence in the museum, Sildo has its own pavilion, Tunga has the Tourouge and uh, building just for himself and with many works. Uh, so this is Adriana Varejan that Mark also pointed out. So Adriana is an unusual case for the museum um, uh, standard in a sense because we are not really about uh, worried about architecture. Architecture exists to provide the artist its best condition or the best condition for their art. So it should be basic or depending on the needs of the artist. But Adriana uh, did a collaboration with Rodrigo Lopez in a beautiful museum that they both collaborated and the work, some of the works were made for the, for the building. Some of them were just, you know, purchased and placed in the, in the, in the pavilion and it's really, 
incredible. It's an amazing experience. Uh, and then Doris also said there's another way of describing more or less what we can do in Yo Ching, which other places can't, is that this is Doris Ocedo's, uh pavilion with the piece Neither. So just to give you a little quick uh, background. So Doris made this piece for the White, uh, White Cube Gallery in London. So she built this based on an Auschwitz experience that she uh, encountered when she was there. And she make, made this, I don't know if you can see the details. So it's basically like a chicken wire, you know, squeezed on, on the wall. And it, it gives you the sense of lust and confinement. And sometimes it can be, you know, peaceful, but, you know, so people have different... Um, reactions in the inside the building but the idea when she built this piece she basically based a uh, build for one month exhibition in london but then we come in and say we want this and we want this to be permanent and in a way it's the only way for a piece like this to survive because you can't just install the install 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 the install you get just lost and so the idea that Inyo Ching can also give some of these works a permanent home, uh, it's also incredible and gives artists a great pleasure to work with us and also, you know, to conceive a way of actually something that should be built just for, to exist for a month, to now exist permanently. It's not easy, you know. Uh, this is our... This is another example of what we can do there. For example, uh, Elio Tisica, who Mark introduced to you, uh, he did this series of, um, which is called Cosmo Coca with Neville Dalmeida. And uh, Neville, sorry, Neville and Elio, uh, Elio, they worked on five Cosmo Cocas, which are environments with music and slides and situations. For example, here you lay down and you look at, you know, you see the slides going on and then you have, this, uh, uh, this cosmococca, which is a soft, like a mattress on the floor, and you have this all soft elements, again, with sound and the slides, uh, the projection. This is a sand on the floor with the balloons. And this is a pool that you can actually go into and experience the whole piece. Uh, and uh, this is also, you're welcome to come and, and join the hammocks and all that and uh this is the only place that all the cosmococcus was ever seen all together and they remain together permanently so you can actually you know you go to this building and you can experience the five pieces that they did together at once uh this is a uh, yayoi kuzama piece uh this is Lija Papi, the Tetea that we have there, also permanent. You can go there and it's always there, luckily, lucky us. Uh, so this is Victor Grippo, an uh, Argentinian artist. This is Valesca Suarez. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna go quick. So not sure, you know, you guys can cut me off. So this is uh, Matthew Barney, which uh, it's interesting how he was able to to also use the landscape in, in the museum. So basically what he wanted was something really hidden in the forest. So to, to go to get to his work, you really have to go through a path through the, through the, gal, through the forest so you can get to his uh, piece. I think what is interesting to talk about in Yo Ching is that artists have a great, a big part of how the museum was built. So it comes from Bernardo's passion and our kind of organization, but it's really based on what the artists want. And we try to fulfill as much as we can their desire and their needs. And so there is a lot of discussion. It's a great, great uh, process uh, because to be there with Matthew and say, I want this, I want, you know, I want forests, I want eucalyptus. And we go, we're like, yes, we found eucalyptus, you know, forest for you. And then they build something amazing like that. And uh, Doug Aiken, it's an, um, I think it's also an interesting um, 
uh, way to explain, for example, Doug came, looked around, got inspired, and chose the site for this, you know, amazing piece, which is a circular building that you go in, and the whole ceiling, I'm not sure if you guys can see, it's a uh, speaker, and through this hole, you have 200 meters down the earth, you have micro, uh, microphone. So when you are inside the building, you can hear the sound of the earth. And you can, you know, you have a 360 degrees view of the landscape. So this is Rivani, uh, which is, uh, as you can see, this is a small farm that we decided to keep the house of the original house. We just renovated the inside and we installed Rivani's piece. This is our here crypt da Venetia. Uh, this is our only pavilion dedicated to painting, which is Carol Dunham, also an old farmhouse. This is Marila Dardo, where you can plant um, uh, uh, plants and flowers. And this is, um, Eloitisica Magic Square. This is Chris Burden uh, Bing Drop, which was built right there with us in a 20 hour uh, period. It was one of the most amazing experiences. If you guys have some time, there is a beautiful video you can find at YouTube that documents the whole installations. It was one of the most powerful things I've ever experienced in, in art. This is Jorge Maki. Dominique Gonzalez Forrester, that's a Giuseppe Penoni uh, tree. Uh, Lafour Eliasson, we have two of his buildings that are under construction. This is Joanne Hearn, was, it's, uh, he's an artist that actually lived in Ingochin for six months and created this whole project with the co local community. So these are, I don't know if I have, these are cast of actually local people and some of them actually still work in the museum today. This is Janet Cardiff. Uh, this is one of our newest building. It's a Claude Jean Dujar um, uh, building. It's over 400 photographs. Uh, so it's a really a retrospect of her career. She was really involved on the making of the building and installation and um, choosing the photographs. Um, so it expires for, you know, from the beginning to actually a very recent uh, a series that she made on her last visit to the Amazon. So she has a, I'm, I, I have to speak fast, but it's, uh, she started her relationship with the Anomami in the 70s, uh, lived with them for a long time and then kept coming, going. So uh, it's a very emotional, personal work. Uh, at the same time, it's uh, an anthropological in a sense. It's like you, you know, you, you know, she documented their lives and their rituals and their fears, and so it's it, it's a really special building. And this is our last um, permanent piece that we just built. It's a Robert Irving, and I put a little piece, a little making off, so you guys have an idea of you know, how things get done. So we had a meeting with Bob and he proposed this piece to us and it took us a while. We chose a site together and this is the preparation of the site. And then we start building and uh, we just open now in November. We are super happy with the, you know, with the piece. Um, it's, you know, it really reflects a lot of uh, Robert Irving's piece with the light and angles and sky and and you know like the ground how you look up so it's architecture is space uh it's a beautiful piece we're very happy so this is a some of the works of the collection I mean, it's kind of random so this is a nesto neto uh this is a space that we have it's an open space that we change uh from time to time so that's Irando Espirito Santo. He did uh, wall painting. This is a Paul Pfeiffer that's right there right now. Uh, this is Marcus Galan. Uh, this is another Irando Espirito Santo installation. That's a Chris Burden um, 
uh, Yayoi Kusama, again, it's an environment piece. I'm here, but nothing, it's called. Uh, this is a uh, David Lamelas, uh, uh, José Damasceno, uh, Erika Versucci, Pablo Acinelli, and Haig Young, Alexandre da Cunha, and Caetano de Almeida. And this is it. So uh, I'm, you know, open for questions and uh, sorry if it took longer than it should. It's, it was absolutely fabulous. Uh, absolutely fabulous uh, to be able to to uh, to 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 travel in in, in time is as as if we were there. Uh, thank you so much, Fernanda. You're welcome. Uh, so um, um, now I think uh, uh, Mark uh, is uh, wait. Uh, okay. Good. Should I? I'm gonna mute myself and yes. stop sharing, right? Better. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, Fernanda. It's better. Uh, maybe, maybe, uh, uh Brenda, Valency, would you are you? Uh, can, can I see you? Oh, you're here. Okay, <laughs> I've been the name of Marcus. Oh, it's yes, my because it was Marcus, I was like, it's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. So, uh, Brenda, um, would you like me to show your film? Yes, yes. Yes, yes please. Someone needs to be unmuted. We, yeah. are, we are a lot on the video today. So, yes, here okay. we are. Okay. So, here so we are. So, like, uh, congrats, Fernanda. It's amazing to see your team these days. Uh, that we miss so much to be outside, so it's very refreshing for the soul. Uh, I put it here a video, and thank you, Mark, for this invitation. Thank you all for being here and giving me this space for me to speak. <clears throat> so I'm Brenda Valancy. I'm the founder and, all, and director of our trio, the International Fair of Rio de Janeiro, that is started this way as international, but since 2016, we decided to have it only uh, main focus in Brazilian art. Uh, uh, this, this year would be our 10th edition. We started in 2011. And in 2012, uh, my, my goal was to really make Brazilian art international. So I did the move to bring international galleries to the art fair. And I did it well. It was the first time like the huge uh, blue ship galleries came to Brazil and to Latin America, like David Zwinner, Gagosian, they all came in our second edition. And it was a very huge fair and very international. The years was passing and I was uh, realizing that the world was closing again. Uh, and we were not like having this in in intersection so much with the Brazilian art to the international world from the galleries. So in 2016, I decided to reduce the fair to make a smaller fair and to make it focus on the Brazilian art and the Brazilian uh, galleries and Marchands. And it was very successful because like you could see from Mark and from Fernanda and you see from Tere, we have a huge, huge, huge uh, artistic content, high quality in Brazil. Uh, I'm lucky to be in a country where I can make a fair, a whole fair with 70 galleries with mainly uh, Brazilian artists because I, in my opinion, the Brazilian art is very sophisticated, very international and very distinct. And also you have all the medias you see over there. So the fair in 2016 began to be only Brazilian. And then we moved to this place that Mark uh, showed in his presentation, that is Mariana da Glória. Also a, different, uh, a difference that I look forward in our trio since the beginning is to, to it's, it's, a, it's, a business, uh, it's a business fair, of course, but also in Brazil, we, we, we have a lot of institutions, but we don't have so many incentives from people to, to go to museums and to be approached to art. It's very elitized. 
So what I did since the beginning is to make the fair and make actions uh, uh, around the year to, to bring people close to the, to, to the arts. And now that we are in our 10th edition, I could see the difference. This is, you could see uh, how many people come to the fair. And uh, it's, it's beautiful to see that we, we could uh, give the first touch of art in some people. We have a lot of difference in money-wise. We have a very middle rich people and a lot of middle class and poor people that don't have any access. So with the fair, we, we do programs to bring these people. And also during the whole year, we do actions to make them first contact or other contact. We have like our trio social that we bring people that have no access to museum. We have now a new program that our trio education that we, we, we bring to communities in neighborhoods that have no museum or anything like a series of uh, of works that show uh, art history to give them a start so we don't hear like, I my, my children could do this. We have to start very from the beginning in, in Brazil with these people because we are very lack of culture. And, but it also here in Brazil, you could see when you have a good exhibition or something like that, you have like records in museums. So people are very interested. So that's very good. They don't only have the, the opportunity. So our trio, um, the video you saw was in, um, in last year, 2019. This year would be our 10th edition. I thought it would be like 50,000 pe 50, people on the fair. And now we are in this situation that we don't know when the fair is going to be. But my idea is really to to make the fair happen, I don't know when. The first date is September. I don't know if it's going to be possible, but there's chances for us to do in October, November, December. I really want to do this fair uh, this year because the, the art scene in Brazil needs it. Unfortunately, we didn't have the SP Art, the fair in Sao Paulo, that is very important to make the, the whole market uh, circle. We didn't have that. It was, it was supposed to be in April. So I'm, I'm pushed by the market and from myself, of course, to really try to do the fair this year. Of course, in different, in different ways. Like I told you, uh, my goal was to bring create a new public all the time, give all the, all the conditions to the collectors to come to the fair, but make new public because Brazil needs it. And the fair different than other countries. It, Sometimes it, it has a, like a museum, not a museum, but sometimes it's the, the, it's the place that people go to see art like they didn't ever go to anywhere else. So we have this responsibility. And, but anyway, this year, uh, what I'm planning to do for the fair is unfortunately to put this thing besides and do a very strict market fair. So focusing in collectors and galleries, so we don't have a huge public coming over there because we know that it's going to be like restrictions of space and everything like this. So this is my plan for this year. And another thing that we do, like not considering this year that, that I hope is an exception, uh, I hope next year we come at least something normal. Uh, we do a very huge collector program. So you are all invited. Mark has my contact and uh, we invite uh, international collectors from, from out of Brazil and from out of Rio. We, we put them all together in Copacabana Palace and we do a major collector program in the mornings, like going to collectors houses, artist studios, uh, collectors farms, and even in your team. And so it's a very good experience because I understand that when the foreigner comes to Brazil, it's hard for them to jump in the fair and understand what we are selling there. So I think it's really important to make, to show them the scene. So we do this huge program that we take care of the collectors from 8 a.m. or 9 when they start the program until 3 a.m. if they want to stay in the parties because there's a lot of parties, of course. Yes, Brenda, thank you so much. Uh, it was uh, absolutely uh, uh, fantastic. I'm sorry for the sound at the beginning. <laughs> no, no 
<laughs> but but uh, you you said that it uh, you you transformed it into a small local fair. It it seemed to be quite huge, but uh, and then uh, and I could see at the end that there was uh, Sandra Ejedus who was speaking, and she came recently for a talk uh, with uh, in conversation with Catherine Petitga who is uh, with us today. I could see. So maybe if we have questions after. Uh, we, this is a very long talk today, uh, but I'm so, I, I hope that you're all ready because, uh, because uh, we still have uh, Tehra Cairo to, uh, maybe I'm not really pronouncing it well, who, who, um, who will be talking. So uh, Tehra, can you hear us? Me. Yes, Tehra, yes. yes. So we cannot see Tehra today, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, we can hear her. So, uh, so, uh, and I'm going to share the screen again. Uh, okay. for Sorry, Anne, for yeah. not being able to fix my camera on time. But yeah. I didn't know my camera wasn't wasn't no. able to. Don't but now, after to open your presentation. Okay. Yes. All right, but yeah. after these breathtaking presentations, I guess God helped me not to appear. So I know. I <laughs> let know. us <laughs> let us just experience this as a a performance, a yes, John exactly. Cage performance, or something yeah. like that. <laughs> no, but it's fabulous because you know, even in an, an hour, an hour and a half, we will be able to have like the the the, the, the scene with uh, Mark, uh, like the historical background very heavy and then and then the museum and the fair and you so it's going to yeah it's, it's fantastic go on go on okay so thank you all for the invitation i'm completely uh, i'm very lucky to have all those presentations here and having you to hear us uh hear about my impressions in brazil and um in particular in sao paulo Mark, thank you very much. And now I'm, I'm just pointing you out some highlights from Sao Paulo because I'm a collector as well, a Brazilian collector. Me and my husband, Fabio Faisal, we have a, a little particular, uh, very particular Brazilian collection as well. But I'm based in Sao Paulo for 30 years already. So I've been everywhere since <laughs> working in the, in the art scenes uh public in the in a public and private as well so i started with the private galleries when i was very very young when i came to sao paulo i was born in the northeastern part of brazil in recife where the beaches are but i'm here already almost 30 years for almost 30 years so uh then i i, I made my career between all these institutions, I worked for Mom, I worked for Maki, I came for the the art fair also in São Paulo, and then I went to work for the the Biennial Foundation, which was quite an experience because there I had all this dialogue abroad with the with all the nations. And since Sao Paulo, it's, it's very equipped. It's a very equipped city, a very, I know you guys have this idea of Sao Paulo of being so huge with a huge traffic jam, a, a bit messy, but we're very prepared, I guess, né? because the, it's a financial potential. And um, the, the other one, could you, could you just go, go before back. the slide, yes. I started with, with a, a bit about Sao Paulo and the financial street, which we have the Avenida Paulista, where all the institutes, big, all, not all, but some of the are quite big institutions are. Like, um, this is the rooftop of Sesc Paulo. Hello, can you hear? Paulista have in Brazil as it's a socialist model and they have like a 71 units only in Sao Paulo. They're everywhere in Brazil but I think in Sao Paulo they really work so they believe that through art with culture and sports we could diminish we could uh, decrease the social difference 
and Sweet have in Brazil, and, and it's working in Sao Paulo, it's really working. Well, the Brazilians here together with me, you could just uh, help me out with some of the uh, millions of exhibitions we had, like, and they already brought some of the, uh, like, Marina Abramovich show. So we have this quite unique. Next slide, please. Yes, the next we, one. we cannot hear you so well. If you, maybe you can uh, check your connection for two. Uh, maybe it's my connection and that's why maybe I'm not appearing at all. Oh, that's, but yes. you're, you're... Ah, okay, <laughs> go on because yeah. yes. But now we have, yes. Now we have Mashpi, that's one of our greatest museum. That's also in, in Avenida Paulista, it's a nonprofit uh, private institution where all the masterpieces are there. And since 1950, yeah. see, we have all this dialogue with the other nations because of, because of Mashpi. Now, because they're, now we have a new team there and it was built by Lina Bobardi in 68. And it's, uh, you have to see it whenever. The upcoming exhibitions are Elio Tsika and Trisha Brown. So, so just for you to see the quality of our exhibitions. And, and the next one also. Okay. Now, Instituto Moreira Sal is a very uh, a great collection, photography collection we have there. Uh, a great space we also have in Rio. I think uh, Brenda will talk about it. I think you talk about the Instituto, no, only the fair, right? But we have, they started in Minas, then they went to Rio, and now they're in Sao Paulo as well. You will see in the end of my presentation, a big sculpture, Richard Serra sculpture, they, ha they have uh, bought for Sao Paulo, a public, a public sculpture. So it's very nice also. Next slide, please. And also, yet in Avenida Paulista, we have the Japan house. Since uh, Mark told us about the, the immigration of Japanese, it's the second largest immigration besides Japan. It's in Sao Paulo. So that's why they have the Japan house here also. It's very well done and a, a, a quite team exhibition that we see. Uh, every year and it's new basically it's new it's about three or three years right from now and the yaki the institute of contemporary art will open now just now the other one that was there and it's very and it's near now we come to the ibirapuera park where it's it's a, it's, a, it's like our central park here in sao paulo and where the biennial foundation takes place as well and SP Art Fair in, inside the Biennial Foundation, which is for me, it's the, where I've been there for uh, about six years of my life. So besides Venice Biennial, I, it's the second strongest biennial. So this dialogue, it's very, uh, how do you say, strong né? and well known. The, we have this, the 34 edition that will, Maybe, I don't know yet, but I think I'm, I'm quite sure that they will be, they will be there, the, by, done by cu the curatorial team, leader, leaded by Jacopo Crivelli. And the theme, it's, th though it's dark, still I sing. So it's a very prophetic. If you could see the, uh, a little YouTube, inside the YouTube, you'll see the conversation between the curators about the theme and what they are thinking. It's very prophetic. So take a look when you have, on, when you have the time. And the other one, inside the Birapoeira Park as well, we have the Mount, the Museum of Modern Art, very, very powerful as well. And Aka. Every, every the, the Aka, the, the, Bien, the Biennial Foundation, and the auditorium that I've not shown the picture. It's done by Oscar Niemeyer, as told, uh, as Mark told us. And uh, a, li a little story that I'll, I'll try to tell you. When the Crusades came in the city, 
Uh, Nehemiah, when he projected and when he was called to project the park in 1950, he was trying to tell us the story when the city began, that when the Crusades came and they trade you know, some, of their, some of their commerce, like uh, rice and beans for the Oriental, uh, the, the, the Americans, they, they were all in boxes. They were placed in boxes of rectangular, the circle and the triangle. So he decided to tell us the story, you know, where this geometrical forms came from. So this way, he, he projected our signals and our symbols to the Ibirapuera Park. That's why we have this round oca where good and huge exhibitions takes place that you're seeing on your right. We have the, the Biennial Foundation, which is rectangle. The, the mum wasn't made by, by him, but... Uh, but the others were, and it was a, it's a quite genuine um, thought. Next, please. And there's Maki as well, very close, in the other side of the street, very near the, where it's a most potential modern, contempor contempor uh, modern and contemporary uh, collection is there placed but it belongs to the University of Sao Paulo. So there are things in Sao Paulo that, that really works, that political policies here really works, uh, but we're spending, we're li like, we're in a, in a, a very, ah, good, good, now it's centralized for me. <laughs> because since we are the, the most powerful and potential economic place, Obviously, things here works better, and you can imagine that uh, the political policies work a bit more than the, the, the other states. So let's go to the other one, please. Yes. And here is the, the Casa de Vidro, the glass, it's Lina Bobadi's house. On the left, you may see when, he, when she projected, was her first project, architectural project, Lena, and she was very, very courageous because anyone moved to Morumbi, this neighborhood at that time. It was a big forest, but she was an Italian that really liked Brazil, and she really helped us to promote Brazil here and abroad. So she projected her house, and nowadays, after she died and I, I, uh, in 19, 1997, I think they, they just they didn't remodel. It's there as it used to be, but it's, uh, several exhibition, good exhibition takes place there, performances, and it's a quite good trip to go and visit in the Casa de Vidro, Lina Bobardi's. Well, I, I could just spend like 10 minutes talking about Lina Bobardi and how, how she benefits, her, all, all her benefits to Brazil, but we don't have this time. So next one, please. There's a very unique also uh, church. This, this is Capela do Murumbi, it used to be an antique church, but then they remodeled uh, by Warszawski in 79 and 97, they opened as a cultural space. It belongs to, to the, the, how do you say, the city hall. And it's very well done, all the exhibitions there. The quality of the exhibitions are very high as well as the other places. I'm just pointing you out all the, the greatest references. Obviously in Sao Paulo we have thousands and, and I, I might be forgetting some of them, but just, just to let you know, how potential we could Brazil and Sao Paulo can be. Next one, please. And, oh, sorry. and now we're in the center of the city where uh, Copan, uh, it's a building made by Oscar Niemeyer as well. And in the below in the Copan, right below you see Pivot. That's, it's, uh, it's not new, but 
uh, it's like they have like oh, almost 10 years making exhibitions, uh, making research and residences for artists here and abroad. So it's a, a very quite interesting place to see and visit. Very current exhibitions, very good quality as well. So it's in the center of the city, right below the Copan building. So it's an architectural experience and also you have to see the exhibitions also because it's quite worth. Next one, please. Hello? Oh, oh, now. Yeah. Um, and still in the center of the city, we have the Hello? Oh. Eldest uh, and also the, uh, very well known architect remodeled it in 1990. And one of the biggest quality we have here of the exhibitions, uh, it's held there in Pinacoteca do Estado also, together with the other ones that I showed you as well. Uh, and the other one, please. And still in the center, we have. I, I put this, these two together for you to have the, the idea how different Sao Paulo could be. Yeah. This one on the left is another sex unit. We have, it's, it's, it's brand new, this one, Sesc 24 de Maio, done also by Paulo Mendes da Rocha, and a cultural space held it by a bank, the Brazilian Banco do Brasil, in 2001. They, they, they appeared here in Sao Paulo. But it's, see how different could, could, could we be? Né? Uh, one much Art Nouveau and the other one very modern. Né? So it's, it's quite a, it's quite a, a it, it's worth coming to Sao Paulo to see all these differences in architectural and uh, the, the, the next one, please. And now, just to, I, I was pointing out all the, 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 the institutions and museums, but we have to talk about the collectors. Several collectors are here, several collectors in Rio, as well as Minas Gerais, Bernardo Paz, and some others. But here we have Andrea and Zé Olympio's uh, collection. That's really a case. Now they have opened their collections in a, inside a warehouse. They have millions of, not millions, but thousands of pieces. Contemporary, I think it's one of our, our greatest contemporary collection here in, in Sao Paulo. And I couldn't tell, I couldn't least, we have like 100 collectors here, about 100 collectors. So I put, Pedro Barbosa, I, I pointed out Pedro Barbosa because he had a very peculiar collection. He started as Zé Olympio with a contemporary collection, and then he decided from four years from now to dedicate his collections to research. It's, it's among, among all, it's a documental from the 70s. So it's very unusual to see a collector that collects that documents and uh, well, and, and if you, you, you may go inside, you point out a visit and he will receive you. So whenever you come to Sao Paulo, please take a look at Pedro Barbosa and the Olympia's collection as well. Well, I could go out with you guys here and and visit like 40, 50, but you couldn't make it. It's, it's a, a great scene to have. And just to close my, my exhibition, I pointed out uh, sculptures that we have in the city, like uh, Richard Serra at 17 meters that belongs to the Instituto Moreira Salles that I've showed you that's there in Avenida Paulista. And Vitor Brechere, a very well-known sculptor from the, the, from the beginning of the century. 
And um, just to point out, because we have several. Bo, well, that's it. I expect you have a, a brief exhibition of what we have in Sao Paulo, the highlights in Sao Paulo. But uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. Um, uh, it's been uh, quite, ooh, I don't know, you're mute now. I don't yes. know. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much for your presentation. It was uh, mm -hmm. fabulous. I hope that uh, we are, we're, I hope we're a bit running out of time. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, I, I can see that we're still uh, quite a, a big number on the, uh, on the, uh, on the webinar. So, um, uh, so uh, yeah, I have this message from Catherine Petitga who was there, but she, she need, she needed, she says hello to everybody. She needed to, uh, okay. To run away. Um, do uh, if any one of you has uh, questions. I know it's uh, it's a bit because we have uh, many different uh, uh, speakers. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, but if you do have questions, uh, I'm, we're, we're happy to to have every uh, answer. And uh, I don't see any question. Uh, but uh, so I think it was a fantastic moment. Thank you so much, Marc, for having uh, organized this because uh, it's, quite a, it's quite a technical challenge in terms of the, 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 the size of the country, all the artists, all the historical, all the museums, all the collections. There, there was a lot that we did in, a, in one hour and a half. And uh, yeah. so as we, I said, it was a, it was an appetizer, and uh, you know, it, to, to give to give the uh, the appetite, you know, to, to 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 give the wish for everybody to to come to Brazil, and and I think with uh, Fernanda, we had like a good vision of what is Inyotin about. It's, as she said, it's like a two days visit. It's huge. Uh, you have seen with uh, Teha that uh, San Paulo, it's uh, it's enormous. You you know, it's like uh, you cannot see everything because you have like uh, what she has been showing was extremely interesting. But it's a short part of what San San Paulo mm -hmm. is about. And uh, Brenda, when she has been showing the energy of the art fair of course you know she rio we could speak during hours so it's like uh, you cannot resume such a huge country in one hour and a half yes. may, may i ask a question can you hear me yes with the yes. Ah, okay <laughs> hello what a very interesting uh, conversation and mark you were as usual very brilliant i want to ask a question about inner team i was very lucky to be to have been is one of the paradise on this earth and I hope everyone, I wish everyone to go there because the organization, the experience is remarkable. I mean, I wanted to ask you, do you still invite some artists to come to do project or you, is it, uh, is it finished? No, it's not finished. Uh, I guess my presentation was uh, fast. So we still have, probably 12 um, uh, projects ongoing right now that we are waiting for funds or, you know, waiting for uh, plans. But yes, we still invite artists. We still uh, moving forward. Of course, when we started, that's why I think people got very animated because the first opening, we opened eight pavilions. And then the second opening, mm -hmm. we, we opened another six and so now because we already a two-day span our plan is to open maybe one a year you know mm -hmm. and we do we do the temporary exhibition so you know if you go there more than once a year you know you're always going to have some uh, new material but your know, chain is different because it's not like a normal museum that you go every year every month or you know twice a year people mm -hmm. really I mean, locals go a lot, so we have to kind of... Do you, do you have an hotel now? No, yeah. we have not hotels around. And may I ask you one more question? Yeah, sure. What's the, how do you do the selection? Is, it, uh, is there an uh, lim age limit? Is there a country? Is there a, do you have a committee? How do you, do you select? Well, we are very uh, lucky that we... Yeah, we <laughs> It's basically the curators. Uh, Bernardo uh, gets involved, but he trusts us a lot. You know, we've been working with him for 15 years and plus. 
so we develop a relationship really, you know, we are really close. Um, so if he doesn't like, and normally we try to convince him and we were very successful so far, but it's not, there is no committee. It's really um, us getting involved with artists and projects sometimes that comes to us. Um, but, and also yeah. it's a part of his collections. Usually collect the artist. Yes. So we, uh, we yeah. also, yeah, we also, we have yeah. around 800 works right now. So it is a collection that we purchase, we commission and yeah. yeah. And we do, yeah. Temporary so projects as well. Personal. I yes. Really, yeah. I protect, particularly like what you said about its, it, it's, it's experience uh, and the pieces and you invite artists to make a piece of art, like a, a permanent home. And yeah. that, I find that so poetic because all, all these art installations, uh, sometimes, you know, they are just, they are just stored and here you have a home. Oh, you have to go there. there. It's so extraordinary. Yeah. Each of them uh, to, in order to survive, to make the piece survive. And that's, that's, that was f fantastic. Absolutely amazing. Uh, yeah, there is, there is one thing that I didn't say that I love about your Ching is that the way we try to equalize there's no hierarchy you know it's not like very famous artist gets the main spot and also what i think was really beautiful after we open is that some people go there for the botanical garden and they encounter mm -hmm. art and some people like us go for the art and then all of a sudden you don't realize that we have a botanical garden so and to to see the relationship these two encounters and to, to see the, how powerful they are, it, it's the same thing. You know, when you go for nature, you encounter uh, art, you go for art, you encounter nature. It's so beautiful. So I think that's what Bernardo really wanted. He wanted that anybody that comes, you know, that enjoys, there's no need to know this, know that, and yeah. who is this, who is that. It's really about going there and experience it. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. You need yeah. to ask an artist to make to build a fantastic hotel now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, but you had a project. Yes. I thought you had a project. We oh, did. We did. But that, it's well, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's complicated. Let's say we are still trying to. You know, it's a question of budget and people. Yeah. It's it's you know, what can I say? It's yeah. not everything yeah. is easy. Yeah. And, yes. and Mark, uh, maybe uh, if we organize a second session, you maybe you could uh, you could uh, talk about uh, your your curate your next cur curating for the Biennale. Uh, are you going to invite like international artists, or is it going to be very sort of uh, regional, more uh, Brazilian art scene? It's uh, actually uh, we are at the very beginning of building that. You know, I've been mentioning that I've been inviting uh, Guillaume Leger, who wrote this book, La Renaissance Sauvage, L'Art de l'Anthropocène. But uh, uh, today, as we are living a huge crisis, of course, you need to rethink of what can be a biennale. You know, I think the uh, the way we have seen biennales before, uh, I, I think now it's a little bit over, and we need to rethink. Uh, it's the way you, you present a biennale, the way you invite artists, uh, the way I think you, you need really to go more into a sort of uh, respect of uh, a sort of ecological biennale, you, you know, not to go to this sort of like huge uh, numbers of artists. And, uh, and the challenge, I must say, because we are just at the beginning of it, is that this biennale may be... Um, may become the biennale of uh, Curi um, Curitiba, so this is the city in the south of, of, of Brazil, Iguazu, where you have the famous uh, cataract, and Rio de Janeiro. So because one of the main sponsors is involved with the public parks in Brazil, and so he wants us to think about how we could develop it another way. So we are just at this moment of, uh, you know, how to, how to do that in a, in a clever way. Of course, it will be international. Um, of course, uh, artists from Brazil and from Curitiba will be valorized because, you know, if, if some people can still travel and will come to Brazil, it's not to see the, always the same international artist. But uh, we are really at the beginning of, of, the beginning of it. I think um, 
a, a part of this biennale will be vi vi virtual, I think, because 2021 is tomorrow, so it will be very hard to build something you know, uh, it's a very short period of time to work, but I think we are already working on 21 and 23. So I think, you know, the, the big biennial will, will happen a little bit later, but we, we, we shall exist before and there are like some project I can speak about a little bit later, with okay. pleasure. Fantastic. We, we, we are, we, yes, we, 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 we can't wait to hear more, <laughs> to be honest. And uh, thank you again, Fernanda. That was amazing. So, yes, absolutely. Uh, we invite everybody. And you said uh, that you have a fantastic uh, website. And if you, yes. I could send uh, the link after that this, convers this uh, uh, Zoom has been recorded. So, with the presentations, if anyone has any questions uh, uh, we would be glad to you know uh, to, 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 to give any contacts and uh, yes. and uh, and thank you and also I'm going to wish Brenda Balanci thank you thank you again and wish her uh, the best for the fair because we know it's all oh, it's very difficult times for everybody mm -hmm. and uh, of course uh, of course, we are worried that uh, all these fairs will happen for as well as the organizers, the artists, the galleries, the collectors. So, so we wish the best, uh, and uh, we would we are very happy to liaise on any kind for the communication and, and send you know via the website and newsletter and everything. So thank you again for all of us for being here today. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> And it, no, was, no, it was a pleasure. It was a bit thank long. Thank you. It was really good. All right. Thank you so much. We traveled through. Thank you, Wen. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Looking forward to having you in Brazil. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> thank you. Bye bye. Bye, guys. Bye.